In this scene, we see a common intersection. There are people, cars, and various signs. Our human target is located at approximately 40 feet. We also have a license plate target that is located at approximately 25 feet. And our gas station uh, gas price sign is at about 140 feet in this scene. Now this is a relatively wide field of view, but it's pretty common for people who want to capture you know, general surveillance. So in the upper left hand corner we have the 4 SIF camera, to the right a 720p camera, the bottom left the 1080p camera, and the bottom right the 5 megapixel camera. So what I'll do now is zoom in on our 140 foot target which is the gas station price sign. So as I do that you'll see the pixelation that is present when you try to see the prices. And then I'll do the 720p camera. And then we'll zoom in on the 1080p camera. And then the 5 megapixel. So as you can see, with the higher resolution, you're able to see more information in the scene. Now as we go to our next target, which is our human subject at approximately 40 feet, we'll start with the 4 SIF camera, then 720p, ten eighty p in the bottom left and five megapixel zoom in a little bit more and see if we see any facial characteristics and then lastly on our uh, approximately 25 foot target which is a license plate starting with the 4 SIF camera then 720p next in the bottom left 1080p and 5 megapixel So what you see is that there are a few different characteristics and requirements for trying to capture uh, the information that you want in a scene. First is the resolution of the imager, so that's 4 SIF, 720p, 1080p, or 5 megapixel. And then also the field of view. So you want to pick a field of view or use a lens that allows you to zoom in or out, wide or narrow depending on the information that you're trying to capture. Joe, what do we have going on out here today? Well, uh, we have a variety of uh, different cameras up there and uh, we're testing them out to see how they do it um, different distances during the evening, dusk, you know, complete darkness. I mean, we're here in the evening, it's around four o'clock, it's gonna go right. through dark, so we're gonna see it in a variety of lighting conditions. Right, right. Um, what's going on with these signs over here? There are different distances. They could be possible distances that someone would need to detect something or okay. see something. Mm -hmm. So we got range distances here. So distances and light are going to help us uh, determine how these cameras perform. I'm looking forward to seeing how not only the cameras perform, but to give me a sense of what camera to select for what application. How does this? How is this going to help you uh, right. in your role of inside support with people? Uh, it'll give me a better idea of what camera would better suit, you know, a specific application. Mm -hmm. So when a customer calls in and, and explains an application to you, they, you'll have a better understanding of what lensing, what distances, what light requirements. Right, right, especially with all the new cameras and different resolutions, it's a better way to know. Correct. And this isn't the first one of these you've done, is it? No, it is not. <laughs> no, we... Uh, like to do this every uh, at least once or twice a year. Yep. Uh, yep. Camera technology changes. We have to stay up on it. Um, people call you. They they talk to us and they're looking for recommendations. So 
we have to know that we're specifying the right product. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and there is a lot of new technology now. We have some even greater starlight technology, which is really impressive. So yeah, um, yeah. this is a perfect scenario out here. One, the temperature, it's a nice evening, yep. but um, I don't see much ambient light out here. No, no, it's going to be pretty dark. So we're going to have a really good idea of how these cameras are going to perform I think so, in the yeah. dark. We know that this is going to help you select cameras. It'll help me also give an idea of how these cameras perform, what is the best fit for a customer. What is the um, official industry uh, classification for that selection process? It's called Dory. Dory. Correct. Stands what does that stand for, for? Detect, observe, recognize, and identify. Obviously, with these ranges that we have here and the different camera technology that we have, we will be able to tell at, let's say, 100 feet whether we can detect or identify, which is on the other side of the scale. Correct. Yep. And what, what, do we, what is used to determine that? Uh, the amount of pixels per foot, and depending on what you're trying to see, that will determine how many pixels you need. Correct. So if I want to identify somebody at 75 feet versus just detect them maybe at 250 right. feet, there's a difference. Different there. amount of pixels right. required. So, right. and that's going to get into what type of uh, resolution, resolution you need, yep. which is how many pixels. So, um, uh, you know. It sounds very complicated, but I guess at the end of the day, it goes back to what we've always done, right. the basics of video. What are you trying to see? Exactly, yep. And that's, uh, this is gonna help us do that. So yep, I'm looking forward to it. This is gonna be fun. Yeah, it will. Yeah. So as you can see, we are farther along in our testing procedure tonight. Uh, this is where it gets most intense. It is completely dark out here. Our field, which was very illuminated before, uh, now complete darkness, so we see nothing out here. And this really allows us to determine how well these cameras perform. So now when we apply Dory to this situation, we are interested in what this camera can see with regard to detection, observation, recognition, and identification in this very low light environment at our distances that we have measured here. So we do have some very low light performing cameras, but again, low light. We will use our infrared illumination to provide light onto the scene and still see how we can accomplish what level of that Dory classification. This has really enabled us to determine what camera performance is required to meet which application. And this is information that we're gonna to use to solve customers' problems and provide them the camera's going to, that's going to meet the expectation uh, and provide the, the usable video. So we'll continue along with the testing here. We're going to start doing some infrared illumination in our scene to see how that affects the very, very low light scene as well. So we're moving along nicely.